at Boston College, Virginia, number six in the country, moving up one spot in this week's poll, taking on BC. Our starting lineups brought to you by Toyota for the 21 and four Cavaliers. Follow this team, you know these guys: Clark, Franklin, Bigman, Gardner, and Vanderplums. Since he moved into the starting lineup, has given Tony Bennett a lot of versatility. The Toyota starting lineup for the Boston College Eagles. The anchor, of course, is Quentin Post, with Devin McLaughlin, Crimson Lindby, and Langford and Zachary ready to go to work here in BC tonight. For this BC team, you saw them over the weekend, Brian, at Florida State, getting better. Much improvement, of course, since Post came after injury at New Year's Eve. But this may be a little different ball club than one Virginia saw in Charlottesville. Absolutely. Here, Boston College already knocked off two ranked teams. And then a lot of it goes with how quickly can they get Quinn Post off. But you, you're going to find Virginia to probably double him. And then how about his supporting cast tonight? Roger Ayers, Justin Porterfield, and Lamar Simpson are the officials. Virginia in blue, BC in white. We've got the gas. Clark. At the point now, it's Gardner. Vanderplot shot clock down to five, and a nice move inside, but a better tip by Jaden Gardner. And Gardner's one of those guys that's always going to hover around the rim. Boston College's got to do a good job of trying to put a body on him because with his mid range and how physical he plays, puts a lot of pressure on their front court. Brian, these are two defensive teams, so when you look at them offensively, you've got to have the patience to play through the entire shot clock. And sometimes we have to get not to your first and second option, maybe for Boston College, even down to your third and fourth. This is the guy everybody's got their eyes on tonight in post. At the end of the clock, a long heave is no good by Ashton Langford, but BC gets the offensive board. Posts against Gardner. They come with the double. BC shot clock now at six. Post had that one blocked. And Virginia's got the basketball. Earl Grant told, basically we talked with him, he talked about Quinn Post and playing with the, to get the ball out of his hand on the double team, you see Gardner again shooting that shot and no one putting a body on him, it gives him an opportunity to go for that offensive rebound. I like that with his first foul. Tony Bennett's club 11 and 0 when scoring 70 or more points on the road in the conference. They've gone five and three. And of course, a lot of balance to that Virginia offense. And a key man at that line, Jaden Gardner, putting in his third point, making his first free throw. Earl Grant in his second season as the head coach at Boston College. They've won two games against ranked teams. The last time they beat three in a season, you have to go back to 2008-2009. And a good sign for Gardner, a career low 65% of the line this year, nails his first two. Obviously, for Virginia, free throws are going to be an important part of it. This is a team that hovers towards the bottom of the conference as far as free throw percentage. And a travel. Little shaky start here for BC going up against this outstanding Virginia defense. And one of the things that Virginia does a good job is being able to play on the ball. They don't, they rarely get broken down and you rarely touch the paint. For Boston College, you gotta be more disciplined to run your sense and you cannot get outside of what the game plan is. Key hey clock to the corner and Beekman missing. Out of bounds to the Eagles. Overall, Boston College is two games under 500. And you think back to the early days in November, December, when they did not have post, they dropped some games they probably would win now if you replayed them with post. Absolutely, and I would like that we spoke with Earl Grant. He talked about how his team is mature. And then, obviously, having quit in post has given him a lot of freedom. You see, a guy asked for length for coming and knock that shot down. And he's the guy for me, Bob, I think that along with Quentin Post has got to have a solid game because you can't rely just on the numbers from Post. Ashton Lane has got to come up big this season, too. Van der Plaas had it knocked away, and BC comes up with the steal. Up top, it's McLaughlin. Now into Post. 
Too strong off the glass. Offensive stick back for the big man. The seven-footer puts it in. And, and that's what I feel like for Post. He's got to go quick. You know that Virginia's going to come with the double team. He has to recognize single coverage. Go off, go soon. That last time, understanding where to go get that offensive rebound for the putback. Franklin. Gardner. Back to Franklin. His long three is an air ball. Captured by a leg bag under the basket near the baseline. 4 4, BC. Looking to take the lead and a leg bay nets the three-pointer. And that's one of the things for Boston College. They want to play with pace. The more you can get stops on one end, get into early offense, and that does not allow Virginia to get that pack line defense set up. And again, Clark tied up by Zachary. The arrow belongs to Boston College. This three by Prince, just his 12th of the season. And again, to be able to catch that ball in rhythm and knock down that three, Boston College wants to get started. You want to go ahead and punch a team like Virginia early because normally they're the more physical team, but Boston College is one of those teams also that want to muck it up a little bit. You see right now, Hayes kind of favors Boston College. 7-0 Boston College run. After Lankford gets it inside the post. He got behind Vanderplas. The pass was a perfect one. Great pass, and then posted amazing job of pushing Vanderplas up. Nice lob, no weak side help. Virginia's got to have that weak side defender come over. If not, it's going to be a long night for Vanderplas. He hey Clark, nice drive. One hander, too strong. Ludbury energized with the rebound. Here's Zachary. Hurt that right leg. In a game against Virginia Tech a few weeks ago, still wearing the bandage covering that right calf. Banging. Turnover. Franklin gives it up to Gardner. Coming up. Jacob gets to the paint. Gardner's spin move around the rim and in. And that's where Gardner's at his best. He can get in that mid-range, again, for his size, to put the ball on the floor to the left and right, uses the defender's body to spin off of him. He's one of the better mid-range game players in the in the conference. Virginia's Gardner fronting the post, and again, BC trying to go over the top. Cavaliers take it away. Gardner's got to make a better pass than that. He's got to get that ball towards the backboard. Post had a good seal. Gardner had a good defense. And again, Brian, patience against that Virginia D when they're front of the post. We've got a timeout. 14.35 to go in the first half here in BC. Eagles playing well. And how about this one? From seven for keys to the game, Mr. Rollins. Uh, we talked about both teams and how physical they play. And, and I think that for Virginia, it's going to be important for them to get points in the paint. It's hard for this BC team to keep those guys out of perimeter. And for Boston College, you don't want to play against this back line defense. You want to create pace, get stops, get an early offense and transition. Virginia basketball out of the timeout. Zachary had that BC foul as we went to timeout. Kihei Clark nailing his first shot of the night. And how about Kihei Clark? I remember we talked earlier with Tony Bennett. Just with how the timely moments where he comes out, gives the big plays, and he reads the defense and understands what his team needs. Mason Manson has checked in, number 45 for BC. Also, Chance Kelly, there's double zero and a turnover. In the ball game, Shedrick lays it in. How about Shedrick being able to come up, big man, getting that steal and going coast to coast? Again, if you're Boston College, that's the last thing you want to do. You got to make sure that you're playing with discipline, run your sense, because Virginia's going to be tight on defense. They're not going to give you anything easy. Cavaliers capture the lead at 11 to 9. Posts. Virginia bringing that double immediately and driving to the basket. What a nice pass out of the double team. Well, and here's the thing that Post realized that the double team was going to come. Earl Grant talked. He wants them to welcome the double team. You saw Langford right there, not settling, cutting right to the basket, making Virginia pay. Cavaliers 6 and 3 in true road games, 5 and 3 in the conference on the road. See here at home in conference play four and four. Five of the shot clock. Gardner. 
It says eight early for Jaden. And that's one of those things for Gardner. That's a mismatch. Boston College got to decide how they're going to play that because even if you have Langford down there playing him, I mean, Gardner's got him by at least 20 pounds, and that's where he thrives in that low post. Time to hit the streaking Manson. Cavs last to touch. Here's Gardner, 6'6", 233. Well, again, you watch right there. You see Langford trying to hold his position. We call that a little mouse in the house action. And as you see him walk through, he says, yeah, he's a little he's too, too small. 13-11. <laughs> Kelly, five on the shot clock. Manson, baseline, jumper is good. And the ball moves from east to west. That last time, defense had to play post as he cut down. You saw Madison that you have to honor the three-point shot, being able to sell that pump fake and get two dribbles and knock down that mid-range jumper. Gardner had 18 against Boston College in Charlottesville. Off to a great start here with eight first halves. Lines and the Cavaliers call his number one more time. Spins into a double team. Post had it covered. Around the perimeter to Clark. He'll fire. Rebound Shedrick. Back up to Beekman. In the ball game. Neely, the noted three-point shooting specialist. The freshman from West Virginia leads it short. And we've got a foul coming on Virginia. This will be on Caden Shedrick. A timeout in Boston, 11.41 to go. First half, and we are tied at 13. The tw Doubler. 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 By Gold Rush. With multiple ways to double your winnings. Available at a Florida lottery retailer near you. In Alaska, the wild fish are plentiful. But the potatoes are lacking. So... Arby stepped in to pick up that slack. $5 crispy fish and fries. Arby's, we have the meat. structures and skyscrapers but teams who make it all possible after all we wouldn't be where we are today without them so we made sure that like these buildings their futures may also stand the test of time Even at 13, as Tony Bennett talks to his Cavaliers, an early turning point in tonight's game, the play of Jaden Gardner, brought to you by Coyote Tractor. Gardner's been hot, Brian, over his last seven games, averaging 14 points a game. And we talked about the fact of how physical he is, being able to get separation. He lives in that paint area around the free throw line. His ability to make sure that he's taking advantage of the mismatches and punishing the smaller guards has got him off to a great start, eight points, three for four. But again, Tony Bennett called that timeout. Probably not too happy with what Boston College has been able to get early in his first half. You see Gardner, one of three active players with 2,000 points and 1,000 rebounds. His fifth collegiate season began his career at East Carolina, his second year at UVA. He gets a breather in a tie ball game. And one of the things in Virginia, they're recognizing that Boston College is literally going to switch every pick. And so when they're switching all the picks and screens, that's going to allow a guard to be on the smaller guys, and they're giving them a chance to eat down low. He sees Ashton Lankford at the top. Crowd around that high screen. Now Lankford finds Madsen. Pull up. Barely drew iron. Franklin the rebound. When you see Boston College has gone to a five out, 
with no post presence now that Post is on the bench. Again, for Virginia, they're going to take advantage of trying to be patient, run you off the screens, and look for the mismatch. Vanderplot. Van Battendag got it back to the sideline. Franklin going up. Rebound to BC. With post on the bench, where do you think, Brian, the offense is going to come from? Well, what they're going to have to do is find a way to break down uh, Virginia and get some penetration for some help. Easier said than done. On the help, make that extra pass and get something in the lane. Three seconds on the shot clock. And from the baseline, Bickerstaff delivery. And a nice possession by Boston College. Bickerstaff has that ability to put the ball on the floor. They have to take care of the ball because Virginia does a good job of getting those passing lanes with active hands. 15-13. McNeely gives it up on the drive. Big man gets it to go. And that's the guy from Virginia, I think, that has the ability to break down his man and get to the bucket. Beekman is one of those guys, again, that can shoot the ball from outside, but I love his ability and how aggressive when he gets down here. Hooker's stand. Draws a whistle. Again, Bob, when you talk about Virginia, they're going to be patient on offense. And you see right now, Beekman realizes that caught the defender, standing straight up, puts the ball on the floor, athletic enough and long enough to get there. But there's no shot blocking on the floor for Boston College. And right on cue, Clint Bost comes back into the game for the Eagles. And I think Earl Grant realizes that time to time he's going to have to give Post a little breather, a little breather. But he's not going to give him much, especially the way the pace is going right now. He's a great opportunity. Again, they've got to give Post that opportunity to score inside, but he's got to also pay attention to the double team. BC has hit seven of its first 11 shots against the Virginia D. Post. It's the cutter. Nice weak side action for a lay-in by McLaughlin. But again, it all started with Quinn Post. When he got that ball, he expected the double team to come. Earl Grant always talks about when he gets the ball, the first thing is not to try to score, is to welcome the double team. Watch it right now. He peeks over, realizes he's got a cutter, and Kelly. Kelly makes the extra pass over McLaughlin, and that's how they're going to create offense from the double teams. Good recognition by Quinn Post. McLaughlin could not complete the three-point play. Moved into the starting lineup in late January in the Clemson game, coming off 16 in Tallahassee last weekend. Yeah, he was big in that win at Florida State also. Has some timely plays, big buckets, and key free throws toward the end of the game and seal that win for him. Virginia, 6 of 14. 43%, 1 of 6 from 3 in the early going. Post. Coughs it up, but the ball's out of bounds to Virginia. And that's what you don't want if you're Earl Grant. Even though Quinn Post can handle the ball in the perimeter, you don't want to see a little big-on-big -big action going right there. You want him to pass that ball. You want to make sure that he can get it east to west, get a little dive, but you cannot make those turns over right now and give Virginia an opportunity to capitalize on it. A Virginia defense that forces, on average, 13 turnovers a night. D.C. had 16 in the game in Charlottesville. 17-15. Eight and a half to go in the first half. Clark lets it go. Under pressure. That was blocked. Zachary got a piece of it. And we've got a... Offensive foul on Boston College, Jaden Zachary. You see Jaden Zachary down there trying to get a seal on Kihei Clark. Call for that offensive foul. And again, you see Zachary get ahead of the pack, realize, hey, I got a little guy down here, give me the ball. Gets whistled for that offensive foul. And again, a little bit of a hook on that offside left arm there. I think it's always funny when you see two little guys down there trying to post up. 
Well, you've got these experienced guards and Clark and Speakman. You saw BC come with a little bit of a token press. It's a hard team to press because of their veteran guard play. Yeah, absolutely. And this Virginia team is one that's going to take care of the ball. You're not going to speed them up. You got to stay solid. Make sure you make your rotations. So far, Boston College is doing a good job of being able to not allow them to get to their second, third options and not give them offensive rebounds. Turnaround, McLaughlin. That's one that McLaughlin's got to take advantage of. When you've got a smaller key, hey, Clark, you've got to take your time and, and capitalize. You're not going to get many opportunities to get those mismatches down there against Virginia. 17-15, BC lead, a deuce. Cavaliers come, here comes Clark, the pump fake and drive. Clark, taken down by Post. BC with numbers. To the wing, Kelly. Short hop of the rebound. Zachary. How about Jaden Zachary? Again, Earl Grant talked about the scrappiness that his team plays with. And he thought that they've gotten to a level of maturity where they understand that they're going to create opportunities by being scrappy and, and going the F extra effort and win the 50-50 balls. McNeely throws it away. The bump, the lay-in is good. Ashton Langford's got four now, and BC goes up 21 to 15, and Virginia wants a timeout. Bobby C to Virginia, a little flustered by the pressure from Boston College. Boston College has been physical with them, and they're limiting Virginia on what they want. And again, when you look at uh, Boston College on a 6-0 run, but what's been really impressive that they've held Virginia one of one for nine, and then field goals, and then they have not scored, missed their last five field goal attempts. Reese Bigman with it for the Cavs. Gardner, Clark controls. Franklin a three. BC controls. Boston College has done a good job of not allowing Virginia second chance opportunity as you see Langford turn that ball over. Gardner, tough shot, swatted away. Second chance for the Cavs. Franklin dives to the hole. Nice finish by Amon Franklin. And again, for Boston College, you've got to be able to come up with those loose balls. Again, did a good job in transition. You've got to get those rebounds because Virginia will send two and three guys to the offensive boards. And a whistle. Foul on BC, a push off by Kelly. The last thing you can do is turn over and you see a lead bay comes back. And then Beekman gets that ball and he sees Franklin going right down to the hole. And then he was able to avoid quick post. Again, for Boston College, you have been able to get this lead by being disciplined. You have to make sure that you take and value the basketball. Gardner. Hanson gathers in the board. BC has turned it over eight times here. Have the lead by four thanks to 63% shooting. Kelly. Needs help, finds it. Post will take the three. Too long. An air ball. In fact, it went right off the noggin of Bruce Beekman out of bounds. As you notice that Virginia, they're not giving good post any breathing room to knock down that three. We highlighted him and his three point shooting ability. Hasn't had any clear looks that last time. An air ball. See, man, he has not been able to get any offensive rhythm yet. Freshman Ryan Dunn has come in for UVA. That is he with the offensive rebound on the post air ball. Dunn has had an outstanding freshman campaign. He and McNeely, out of that freshman class, prominent role players off that Tony Bennett bench. And Dunn in the open court can do some pretty amazing things. Five on the shot clock. Beekman gets all the way to the hole, but missed the shot. And both nearly turned it over. In fact, he was the last to touch, and I think that may get overruled as Lamar Simpson comes in with a little better information for Roger remaining in this first half. Boston College tried to pull the upset. Number six, Virginia, down four here in the early going. Earl Grant, second year head coach. Franklin. Clark. Beekman. 
Gardner lets it fly. Now BC's got it. Great defensive possession by Boston College because you saw each man playing the ball, staying at home, especially on the penetration by Kihei Clark. A lot of times he's going to pull the lane and look to get somewhere, but then Boston College did a good job of staying disciplined and staying right on their mid. Tough shot. Felipe stays with it. Cavaliers with Reese Speakman now. The defense by Dunn. Talk about how long he is. Very good defender with his length. And it is going to go out of bounds off Virginia. And just to a timeout. 344, first half in Boston for the Eagles and the Cavaliers. What he's done as far as putting his stamp on this this uh, Virginia uh, program. And one of the things that they did not list there also, I think they qualify for an AARP card <laughs> yes. as well. They, he may get a just a get the monthly mailer start or, or at least an early pinch of school right on the bounce post All right, he missed the opportunity for a shot he's wide open a block shot loose ball to the corner and it's out of bounds to bc but only 1.4 on the shot clock. That last possession between Ashton Langford and, and Quinton Post, I thought Post passed up a wide open shot. And I think a lot of that is because Virginia has not allowed him to get any kind of offensive rhythm. Right now, only four points with two for six shooting. Oh, Whoa. it goes! Oh. What a shot by Ashton Langford in the corner. And that was a three. He had to unload it. But scoring your night when you get a shot like this, and you say, but it looked like he almost stepped out of bounds. Yes. It's one of the things that they missed right there. But then again, knocking down that three. Huge momentum swing for Boston College because Virginia has struggled to score. Only 7 for 25, 28% field goal. You see, there was a whistle, no basket. Beekman with a turnover. Again. You see, right there, steps out of bounds. But how about the shot over a contested hand? And you see Beekman right there is like, come on, man, you kidding me. Fifth Virginia turnover. Nice pass inside. The land is good. And again, you see Gwen Poles recognizing and accepting the double team. What you see, weak side got caught, uh, penetrates to the rim. Great dive. Langford finishes right over a small Akihei Clark. Reese Bigman to the basket. Boy, he got hammered. Ashton Langford with his first foul. You know, one of the keys here for Quentin Post is to recognize where that double comes from and then get rid of it. And you see, he basically escapes from the double team, realizes he's got somebody open on that backside. You see Langford dive and realizes that anywhere around the rim, because you've got Kihei Clark, a smaller guard under the rim. He just catches, gathers, and finishes at the basket. Reese Bigman to the foul line. Leads the Cavaliers in free throw shooting at 81%. That's his third point of this game. Such Bobby, an improved shooter. If I could go back to Quentin Pose again, he's not gotten any offensive rhythm, but here's what will happen. That Virginia's going to make an adjustment because he's a willing passer out of the double team. And then now they're going to realize that maybe they hold up a little bit on coming off of that double because he's able to punish them. They fill the lane lines, and Beekman's ready for the second shot. In the game in Charlottesville, Reese Beekman scored 11 points, and he was a plus 20 in that game against the Eagles. Now, Reese Beekman, I love his overall game because, again, he gives you the whole package. He can penetrate, can knock down the three. Very good defender. And he can give you the backup point position if you need that as well. Post single coverage with Vanderplas. That's going to be an elbow on Quentin Post and an offensive foul. You see the frustration from Earl Grant about that. And again, I feel like Quentin Post has to go a little sooner. You see right now, you get two dribbles, and you see gave Vanderplas a little bit of a chicken wing right there. Mm -hmm. But I feel like he's got to go away from that, that middle lane right there because, again, when Virginia comes, they're taking the ball right off his hands. I'd like to see him put the ball and go right away. 
think for Quentin Post to get through the first half with one foul is big news. And we still He's got two out minutes. Of four games. And they just took him out of the game. Two minutes to go. First half. Franklin. BC goes zone. Clark. Back out to Franklin. Moves to the baseline with five on the shot clock. Takes it. Misses it. Rebound tipped to Ashton Langford. Here comes BC. Ashton Langford too strong, but he got the whistle. Clark rode him out of bounds and a foul on Keyhead. And that's what we're seeing time and time again. Solid defense from Boston College. Get out in transition. Even if it's not an easy opportunity, you get an early offense. That last time, Ashton Langford realized he can get downhill on a smaller Keyhead Clark. Draws that foul. And that's something that has been working for them in this first half. Seven points for Ashton Langford. Make it eight. And here is a message from Coyote Tractor. All trades. You got to have a little bit of optimism and a whole lot of get go. Second shot good also. Nine points in the first half for Ashton Langford. I feel like he's the guy that's actually stepped up for Boston College. Talk about Quinn Post not being in getting offensive rhythm, but Ashton Langford has come up big in his first half. Already four for five and 11 points. The Eagles have done a good job, Brian, changing defenses on Virginia tonight. And, and their, their ability to switch on the perimeter and stay solid is showing that with the length of having Langford out there and McLaughlin. Vanderplas trying to get one off at the end of the clock. That's no good. But what you're seeing is they're playing solid defense and they're not allowing Virginia to come up with any offensive rebounds. Final minute of this first half. Vanderplas hasn't scored tonight. And BC has a nine point lead on number six, Virginia. Alec Bay. And throws this one out the door. Alec Bay, if, I, if he's going to touch the paint, I would love to see him try to go with that shot. The last time. You do not want to have empty possessions, especially as you're trying to close out a, a half against the number six team in the country. Now, he is a freshman. We know this. But at his size, at 6'7", and his leaping ability, he gets to that dotted line. He's got a clear look at the rim. And you look for Virginia. They don't have any shot blocking on the floor. So, again, like you said, very athletic and finish at the rim. Clark, the bump, and the bank. Nice penetration by Kihei Clark. And again, time and time again. Understands what this team needs, especially time and possession. Absorbing that contact and finishing. And BC will take a time out here as Earl Grant wants to draw up a final play for 17.2. Back after this. Damn. And a lot to talk about here, Brian. Number six is a bit of trouble here. Well, and here's the thing. We talked in the open about Virginia and the fact that they could not overlook Boston College. We talked about also BC had knocked off two ranked teams here already. And Earl Grant is really happy about where they are as a team in a level of maturity. Got an opportunity to go into the half up 10 or possibly not. Ashton Langford's got a lane. Blocked. Vanderplas gets it over to Clark. Post back pedaling. Pull up for Clark is no good. Tip no. And the half is over. EA frustrated. The Boston College Eagles shoot Nip. Brad Stevens, the Celtics president of basketball operations and, of course, their former head coach in Boston, viewed by many as the team to beat this year in the NBA. All right, Mr. Oliver, this is where the rubber meets the road if BC is going to pull it off this upset. Absolutely. Interesting to see how does Virginia come out. Again, we, we talked about how Boston College is going to switch everything, see if they take advantage of trying to get Jaden Gardner back in, into the game. Clark gets into the paint. And here is Gardner. Back out to Clark. Switched against the big. They revisit Gardner for the turnaround at the end of the clock. And again, you see that he had a, a much smaller Jaden Zachary on him. And then in Virginia, that's something that they have to go back to and force Boston College to make the adjustment. On the other end, again, you go ahead and run your offense. Make sure that you get down to your third and fourth options if you're BC. Well, we often say it, but these first few minutes, BC's got to reestablish their momentum. This is where he's got to go now. I feel like it, 
And smothered. Great defense by Gardner. And great defense, but if you're if you quit post, you've got to go ahead and attack the middle. And I think he's taking way too long. You see on the other end, great block. Terrific block by McLaughlin. Jaden Zachary plays it back out front. Ashton Langford with it. Could not develop a pick and roll, so back to the wing goes Zachary. He rolls it in. Zachary realizes he's got a, a small, a slightly smaller <laughs> Kihei Clark on him, but I love the fact, again, couldn't take advantage of the post up early, but attacking Clark put pressure on him to defend. Back to a seven point lead. Moving in, Bigman to the corner, Clark. Franklin. Post. Hands it over. The D.C. lead is seven. That's one of the things we talked about in the first half. Virginia not shooting the ball extremely well. They've got to find some way to get some easy offense and some type of offensive rhythm. One of 11. Clark has hit the only three. One post. At the block. Gets in tight. And missed it. You've seen two possessions where Virginia has not come on the double. That's the adjustment I feel like Tony Bennett has made, realizing in the first half they were getting carved up on the weak side dive, uh, opting to just stay one-on-one -on -one with Post. Franklin, tough shot. Tapped out by a leg bag. Again, watch from this last play. The first half we saw Virginia sending help. It's two times in a row. They're staying at home, allowing Gardner to stay with them. Post did a good job of being able to get past Gardner, but he's got to finish right there on the rim. 13 on the shot clock. Lob entry to Vanderplas. Franklin gives. Gardner fires. He misses. If you've noticed that Virginia is doing not not getting to the cup, BC is doing a good job of staying solid and keeping them on the outside of the perimeter. They've got to find some way to get some offense and try to touch the paint. Post travels. You see a little bit of frustration from Quentin Post. I think he just needs to take his time, allow the offense to come to him. Boston College has given him the ball three times. That's the fourth time he's turned the ball over tonight. I want to salute Coach uh, Coach Earl on this one because you saw that game in Virginia. You start the game, turnover, turnover, turnover by Post. He stuck with him. Some coaches hit the panic button, get him out of the game, but, but he didn't. And it led, I thought, to Post's confidence, and then he shot the ball so well. Ashton Langford driving and laying it in. And here's a guy who's been filling the gap until he gets his rhythm. Is Ashton Langford already 13 points. And again, Bob, we've talked about Virginia's normally the one that's flustering other teams. Right now, Boston College, with their physicality, has turned Virginia over and has turned it into points on the other end. Bigman. <laughs> you just feel the pressure mounting, but Virginia comes up with the steal. Bigman gets it off and scores. And that's a rough play. You see Prince Elite Bay that last time. Solid defense by Boston College. You can ill afford to turn the ball over, giving Reese Beekman an opportunity to turn what could have been another play for Boston College into a Virginia two points. 32-25 BC. Four minutes into the second hand. They revisit one post. That didn't get a flop warning, but it could have. And it should have been. I mean, because you saw Gardner try to take that. But I love the fact that they keep giving Quinn Post an opportunity last time. Gathered himself. Was able to come in and knock down that shot. This one goes off the leg of Zachary. A kickball. And that brings us to a timeout at 15.39 of the second half. Boston College. College, he has been that guy that's pretty much carried them offensively. But I like the fact that Boston College has really mucked the game up for Virginia. Virginia has not been able to get any kind of offensive rhythm. BC has been very physical. They're limiting them on touching the paint, and their active hands are leading to these, to these uh, early steals. Franklin over the rim, rebound. Stick back. That one by Shedrick goes over the rim. And a little frustration here for Virginia as they continue their poor shooting. 20. 2% in the second half on two out of nine. And here's the thing, Bob. Whenever they do get to the rim, they're being met by challenges at the rim. Boston College doing a good job of being able to, to get there. You see the post. Hey, up, but here's the thing, though. You're talking.
talking a seven-footer and basically pumped him and put the ball off for a nice little giant killer. Normally, you see Biggs on the other end of that. What a move by Quinn Post. T.A. Clark measures the three. Loose ball to B.C. Kelly brings it over. 36-25, Boston College. Post in the middle. Dumps it off to Zachary. And, and here's the thing. What made that play? Quinn Post coming in, realizing that all the pick and roll, the dive came over. Had a chance to shoot it, but got it over to Zachary wide open. Boston College got a nice little offensive rhythm going. And the freshman, Isaac McNeely, when they needed him the most. And McNeely is one of those guys you can ill afford to leave him wide open. If Virginia's going to get going from behind the arc, that he's the guy, the sharpshooter that can knock it down. Listen, anybody that played for the polka dots is ready to go <laughs> in Boston. 38-28 on the lob. The lane is good. DeMar Langford's got six. Crafty play by Zachary. I feel like Virginia was so preoccupied with Quinn Post coming off. No one was on that back side. Great read. Zachary. McNeely again. Good again. Back-to-back -back bombs by the freshman from West Virginia. And if you're T.J. Bickerstaff, you have to pay attention to the scouting report. But that's the one guy that you do not want to leave wide open because he definitely can heat up quickly. Post, spin move, blocked, taken down by Shedrick. Good defense by Shedrick if you're post. You do not want to go one-on-one -on -one against Shedrick because with his length, he stays solid and one of the better th uh, shot blockers in the league. Gardner wants it, gets it, surrounded. And the ball belongs to B.C. Isaac McNeely has hit 49% of his threes since New Year's Eve. And here's the thing, and if, if you're Bickerstaff, you got to understand you want to force him to put the ball on the floor. McNeely is coming, giving Virginia a nice little shot in the arm offensively, knocking down those two threes. A nine-point lead for the home team. A packed house at Conti Forum. Number six in trouble on the road. 10.40 to 12.40 to play. He got it off and got fouled. Langford to the line. And Lamar Langford was determined. This is one of the things that they miss with him being out on the second game in return is his toughness, his ability to put the ball on the floor and being physical. So Langford to the line for the first time tonight. A 73% free throw shooter. He started the game in Charlottesville, scored two, has six tonight. And Roger Ayers getting the ball ready, has a word for him, and Langford ready for the first of two. 32 remaining, second hand. First one good. Here's a quick message from Coyote Tractor. In my experience, if you work the land, you got to be a jack of all trades. You got to have a little bit of optimism and a whole lot of get go. Langford misses the second shot. The offensive rebound nearly secured by Bickerstaff, but Virginia comes away, and they're down by 10. For a team in Virginia who struggled to score all night, they got to find some way to get some easy looks. Again, Gardner's on the bench right now. Who are they going to look to for some offense? Clark had it blocked. And I'll tell you one thing. Earl Grant got the attention of his defense. You find McNeely. Well, and here's the thing is that you, you realize that they have the length out there. and you, They've got Kelly on McNeely right now. And he's the guy for them that they have to show on. And can't allow him to get a wide open shot right there. Came off that short. screen. A designated play for him to shoot it on the out of bounds. 12 to play. 41 31. Zachary for three. Franklin. 
Clark. Nice pass inside and Amber. Here's Ryan Dunn. He'll head to the line. A timeout with 11.30 left. The drama building in Boston is that Boston College is in no foul trouble whatsoever. Because they've been able to defend without fouling. And again, when we talked with Earl, excuse me, uh, Grant, he talked about one of the things for them is the level of maturity they've shown on the defensive end. As you see Dunn missed the front end of that two-shot foul. But they have li literally taken Virginia out of any kind of offensive rhythm. Dunn missed them both. They must get some free food or something. I These guys say are going to be something. 41-31. McLaughlin. Tipped out. Five on the shot clock for BC. And again, we talked about Boston College's defense. Let's not forget, too, that this Virginia team is number one in the ACC in points allowed. And they do a good job of being able to lock you down, especially on their dribble penetration. Boston College trying to shift them and get downhill, but that's easier said than done. Victor Staff out. Like Betty coming in. Pass underneath, better D. What a great block by Dunn. Clark looks, finds Beekman. And that's denied inside. Gardner. He'll shoot two. The play was started by, again, getting out in early tra transition. Beekman's ability to get to the basket. And again, Virginia's going to send guys to the offensive boards. In the beginning of the ha first half, Garland made a nice little living inside the paint. See if they can get him established. Jaden Gardner has scored 10 points tonight. Perfect two and two at the line. Last foul on McLaughlin of BC, his second. Gardner was 8 of 12 for Tony Bennett in Charlottesville against BC. He's 4 of 9 tonight and has been one of the few Cavs to be really consistent with his offense. And, and here's the thing for Boston College for Earl Grant. How long do you keep Quinn Post on the on the bench? Because again, this team has not found any kind of offensive rhythm, as I say. James Zachary says, Brian Alvin, you call me tomorrow. <laughs> He's been a double figure scorer 17 times this year and now has nine for the night. 44-33. And a foul is called, a hold on Taz Kelly. Brian Oliver, you said that, you know, there's no one out here scoring. You know what? You better check my resume, put some respect on my name. You <laughs> see Jaden Zachary knocks down that three. Great penetration. And again, Boston College's ability to be able to break down the defenders from Virginia and make the extra pass is definitely one of the things that's allowed them to open up this lead to 11. Beekman. Done. Clark dumps it off late. Gardner. Jaden's up to 14 now. Nice penetration by Kihei Clark. I Virginia thought, starting to get a little rhythm. And, and you notice that. They're getting Gardner there, and then Boston College cannot take their foot off the pedal because, again, as you see now, when Quinn Post come back into the game, they have to make sure that they can maintain that defensive intensity that they've had because if you let that go, Virginia's got balls and players that can put the ball in the hoop. Foul on Reese Beekman for the block. Vanderplas coming back now as post returns for BC. 44-35, Boston College. Interesting to see now with post back in the game. What is the defensive plan for... For Virginia, are they going to go back to the, dip, the double team, or are they going to allow him to be able to stay one on one against Gardner? Post four on the clock, three turns and misses. But I'm not mad at that shot because it didn't seem like he was rushed. He got a good look, and, and Gardner is one of the better low post defenders in this league. So I like that look. A post, Vanderplas inside. 
Gardner connects again. 16 points for Jaden. And quietly, we've seen Jaden Gardner be the one that has literally stepped up. Yes. Virginia has not had anyone to be consistent, but he scored their last six points. BC's lead is seven. Manson back to pose. They double him now. Over the top. Ashton Langford. No. Gardner the rebound. Here comes Virginia. Virginia's got a couple back-to-back -back stops right now. And again, seems like they're, they're getting a little bit of a groove on offensive end. He hey Clark through the lane of the Giants. Back to McNeely. This one no good. And a Ligby coming up with the rebound. Zachary. Chased by Beekman. That defense by Reese Beekman. See Zachary wanted to get down the hill. He was able to stay in front of him. Post. Falls the dribble. Ten on the shot clock. Zachary in the paint. Oh, oh. he just made it over the rim. How about that penetration by, by Zachary getting him absorbing that contact in the finish? 46-37. Clark with the burst of speed. Gets inside but missed it. Rebound, BC. Here comes Zachary. But just when you thought Virginia was making that comeback, BC answered. Zachary for three. Yes. Oh, talking about feeling it. Jaden Zachary is like, you know what? We need a spot. We need someone to give us a little bit of a lift. Talk about the fact that they needed some offense when Quinn Post went out and the man stepped right up. Again, right now, 12 points, and we've seen Boston College be able to resist a slight run by Virginia coming back with their own to up this lead to 12 points. Now we're in the double break zone, so the next stoppage of play will result in a timeout. McNeely missed the three, and it's out of bounds, and we do have that stoppage. Seven minutes, 45 seconds remaining, second half in Boston. And I think that one of the things we talked about is that for Virginia, they had to find some offense, and, and Jaden Gard has come in and given them a lift offensively. But here's the thing, on the other end, Virginia has not been able to stop Boston College and what they're doing. They're not limiting to them. Normally what they do is they force you out of your looks. Boston College has done a good job of being able to spread them. They're playing on the perimeter, and they're touching the paint and making the extra pass. Boston College on the timeout. They've shot 54% for the night. Five seconds tipped out. There's five on the clock here for BC. Earl Grant. Trying to knock off the number six team in the country. Keep their positive roll going. Zachary at the end of the clock had to heave it. Great hey, Clark now to Vanderplanks. Great opportunity again. Virginia. I find Gardner. See if I can get it back to him. Vanderplanks has been a silent man in the scoring column tonight. Has not scratched. 49-37. It's been quite a while since Quentin Post has got a chance to get an attempt. See if Boston College can get him a look. He's not hesitating. Takes the three early in the clock. 6.40 to play. Let's still see if I can get the ball to Jaden Garden. I thought that there was a nice little stretch where they would get the ball into him. And BC could not stop him one-on-one. -on -one. Clark needs it inside. Vanderplas. Good look to find Beekman. Nothing develops now. Gardner, Vanderplas, baseline, got it. Big Ben averages close to eight a game. His first two tonight, and has been averaging over ten points a game over his last three. 49-39. Ashton Langford hits the breaking first by the Langford, and he jams it. And Bob here to tell you that that play was set up by Ashton Langford, putting his head down and getting downhill against Kehe Clark. Force the defense to have to converge, and the league they came right down the middle. Back here, no one there to stop him. Gardner's pass picked off. Ashton Langford with the steal. DC's up 12 in Virginia. In big trouble now with 535 to play. Post makes. Manson. 
baseline jumper. Virginia needs a bucket here, the worst way to follow up that two by Vanderblocks. Clark. Here's Beekman. Looking to drive. Tip, no. Gardner just couldn't get enough on it. Ashton Langford just throws it up, but he got fouled. Again, Ashton Langford, his ability to get downhill. Watch this penetration. Forces the help, and then you see Prince Alipe come down. Finishes that up. McNeely was a little late, and again, draws it. Realizes he got Prince Alipe for a clear run. And Bob, again, we talked about from Boston College, their ability to play solid defense, get into early offense, and you typically don't see Virginia get a chance to get, uh, actually, the penetration like that. And they've done a good job, especially in the second half. Post for three. Tip to the wing, and out of bounds, Virginia ball. Two of those by Quentin Post, he's a little frustrated because had a clear look. Looked like a good three. And James Gardner, you do not want to give him too many of those because he is going to continue to give himself a chance if you leave it wide open. Vanderplas going to work. And one. Nice move by Vanderplas. I love the fact that Virginia has given him an opportunity to go one on one against McLaughlin. They feel like this is a matchup that they can win. You see freezing the defense, coming to absorb the contact for the and one. Again, you know this Virginia team is not going anywhere because solid on defense, and they've got guys that they can throw the ball to that can go get them a bucket. You see Vanderplas come up, and we talked about the free throw shooting yes. from Virginia. Post inside, got Gardner on his back. No shot. First foul on Jaden. That last play, Boston College did a good job of being able to get a cross screen for Quinn Post on that opposite action. Came over. Chris, see if they go to that again. Boston College has done a good job tonight, Bob, of running their offense again because typically Virginia will stop the penetration, but they've opted to go a five out, and then having five out, you're shifting that defense and then trying to take advantage of the mismatches. Shot clock at 15. In this second half, the pass inside post, hits the cutter, swatted down by Frederick, and we've got a Foul on Virginia that will send Devin McLaughlin to the strike. A timeout at the four-minute mark. Forced this Virginia team into a horrible shooting night, but then the stops, they're getting back at them on, on the other end, too. And you look at the percentages, 30% field goal, 18%, already eight turnovers as well. Devin McLaughlin. At the foul line for BC. The Eagles have already knocked off Virginia Tech, Notre Dame, Louisville, and Clemson in this building, and they're about to add the name of the Virginia Cavaliers. We've still got close to four minutes left. But Virginia, they haven't really been able to make it past that psychological barrier of single digits. And Jaden Gardner has given them points at 16, but they need to find someone else to give them some offense. Tip pass. Virginia has it. Nine to shoot. That matchup with Vanderplas and McLaughlin seemed like that was going to open up something, but McLaughlin's been able to stay steady the last few minutes. And these possessions for Virginia taking time off that clock. The lane is good for UVA's Armand Franklin. Just his second field goal tonight. This is their leading score. Absolutely. And just his second basket. But Virginia's got to maximize every offensive possession. Because here's the thing that Boston College is doing a solid job in running their offense, using the shot clock, again, getting to their third and fourth option. A game like this, when you're up 10. Seems like 20. Yeah, and, and the clock is your friend. Yeah, it's your friend. Post to the wing, Manson. This ball's going to roll to midcourt, picked up by Manson. Wow. We 
they've got a whistle here. And it's a shot clock issue, I believe, says Roger Ayers. BC subs, Zachary in for Manson. Three minutes to play. The Boston College again. Clock, the, the clock is your friend. Run your offense. Try to get something where you can get downhill. Maybe get Quinn Post on an isolated post up and let him go to work. Zachary. Follow. Good by McLaughlin. Great follow up by McLaughlin again. Defense is so preoccupied with Jaden Zachary. Sent two guys to McLaughlin. No one put a body on him. DC up in this lead to 12. Two fifteen remaining. Vanderplas, big one. Skip pass to McNeely. Rhythm bounce and firing. Zachary hits the deck. Vanderplas to Beekman. He fakes. He'll drive. In and out for Franklin. And we've got a foul coming on BC. If it's a McLaughlin, it's his fourth. Even though Virginia came up with that ball, that last defensive sequence with Boston College and how they were to help him recover. I mean, look at it. Literally, you're still talking two minutes, and they're up 12 points. I think the defense for Boston College has been a huge story in the fact that they couldn't really get them. Uh, Virginia couldn't get any type of offensive rhythm. Well, this is concerning for UVA fans everywhere. Jaden Gardner on that bench getting checked out. Looks like the lower left leg. Meanwhile, Cavs turn it as Franklin tried to drive. One forty-five remaining in the second half. Has to recover is Langford. He'll go in and score. Oh, wow. Great move by Demar Langford. One thirty-two left. And these fans sets it down. Who sees on the doorstep of a big upset? Earl Grant extends his defense a little bit to make sure that he makes Virginia run some clock and not give me any early easy looks. Vanderplas hits the three. Trying to keep hope alive here for the Cavaliers. 57 to 46. And this is where solid guard play comes into a play, an effect. When you've got a guy like a point guard at Jaden Zachary understands that you take your time, run some clock. You don't want to speed up. Again, I've mentioned before, the clock is your friend. Force the Virginia to, to defend and then try to get in under 10 seconds. Ashton Langford. What a night for Boston College. Talk about a nail in the coffin. McNeely from the corner. The Boston College Eagles and head coach Earl Grant. They're going to win their ninth conference game. They haven't done that in over a decade. Eight, excuse me, eighth conference game. That's it. Ball game. 63 46. Clark. Steps in, hits it with six seconds, 63-48 to mid-court Zachary. He holds on to it. It's all over. Court Sturm a time at Chestnut Hill. What a game by Boston College. You look at that atmosphere, Bob. 